Well, first step for the shed is going to get some blocks to put underneath it. I'm going to throw them in this uh, little Chevy. Right now, my El Camino's got the cannon in the back of it. <laughs> got a pickup truck. We guess uh, we got to take that cannon out of there. Right now, this goes in the back of that. You got some cardboard. You're good to go. All right, they fit in there just fine. You got the cardboard and hurt nothing. Four door. It's one reason to have a four door. All right, that's a little three by uh, five shed, and uh, I'm gonna put all this stuff clear off those bench. It's going in there, and uh, we got a spot for it. Um, I just accumulate these are old banners and stuff. I'm accumulating things. I just gotta get them out of the way. Already laid out 15 blocks. I got a few more right here, um, but this is all walled in. So you got one wall here, one there, one there, and then uh, going around this side. So it's going to be well, it's even have tie downs anyway. So you just lay them down. Actually, I knew this was smooth over here because I had a tarp underneath this. I probably have to adjust some of the blocks, but I'll probably push, put it down. You can adjust. This is a lightweight shed. You can always adjust the blocks by digging out from underneath them individually and put some sand underneath them if they're too low. You don't have to get them perfectly flat from the beginning because the middle don't matter that much. Uh, but I should get some of my stuff out of the way. Well, this part's done. It's getting pretty stable because I got, uh, you know, these top pieces in there across the top. And uh, the instructions on it are excellent. This is, uh, I don't see what the name of the shed is, but uh, this is not that bad because if you're doing an 8x12 with these aluminum, with these uh, flimsy steel panels, it gets, you know, it gets pretty damn difficult, especially if you're trying to do it with one person. So, um, you know, this is all protected, though. You can see this is all... You got walls on this side. As a matter of fact, you can probably just put a roof right over this, but I didn't want to do that because that's, uh, you know, this this won't have be affected by building codes or anything like that. Plus, if I want to move it, uh, I could probably take this door off and squeeze it through here, put it someplace else. It's only three by five. It's uh, like $194 on Amazon. So, um, not, and uh, it was packaged pretty good. Uh, you can see there's a couple little minor dents here, but you know what? When you're using it, it's going to get dented anyway. Very little. It was packaged pretty good. But you see how everything's labeled? This is L1, LF, left one. Um, B2, that, that's back, back two. Uh, B, or bottom two, or, you know, bottom one. It's a good way to remember the B. So they got the front and the back. They're all labeled, you know. Uh, left bl left br uh l1 for the left i was just facing the front l2 so that's one of the good things about this and, and the other thing is since they they got like robots putting in all the little screws that you need you probably won't run short on it you'll find out i don't think so though so it's not that hard to do but you know make sure you give yourself enough time well it's going up pretty quick um uh, there was like four panels that were big panels uh, one each on each side and then two in the back uh, Eight screws in each panel. You might want to have a um, piece of cardboard to kneel on and When you put the screws in I usually put like Maybe like two on the top. Don't put them in fully like put them in like kind of loose Two on the bottom and then finish it up This way you don't have problems with alignment, but this thing is going together pretty easy if you put it together a 8x12 shed, really big one, which I've done that before, and I did an 8x10 and an 8x12. Um, if you're by yourself, you're going to probably have to make some kind of bracing to hold the panels up because the criticalest time is when you got the walls. And this is getting a little stronger now because it's got the top piece around the walls, but still, if there's a strong wind, if you're out in the open, this could totally crumble. And that's one of the reasons I said to leave yourself enough time but I'm in, I'm actually in like this is enclosed in something right now, so uh, it's you know it's still gonna have shed tie downs, and even though the wind shouldn't get at this because there's a wall here, there's a wall there, there's a wall there, there's a wall here, um, you know it's gonna be in here. And this thing also want to say this is light enough that I don't even have to take it through this door. Uh, you, one guy could pick this thing up if you're pretty you know you don't have to be extremely strong. You have to be. A little bit strong one guy could pick this up and move it so this three by five is cheap and it's it's handy and if you put these you use the blocks you can move the blocks too if you decide to move it someplace later that's one reason i like the blocks well this is all going all fine and dandy until 
found out I'm missing a panel, which you can tell which one it is. It's the one right here. I think I got everything else. Because I got two le the door, the left side and the right side. I think I got all the roofing panels and I'm missing that. So I'm going to call up Amazon or Mex see if they can get that part. If not, I'm going to have to put a piece of plywood in there or something like that. It's freaking cheesy, but, you know, they should be able to give me that part. But, uh, you know, they'll tell you, maybe they'll tell you to check everything, but you know what? Um, you know, it came in right when I was leaving. And on top of that, it was, uh, you know, it's hard to tell. I mean, you have to spread everything out. The UPS people would, would, ain't going to wait around for 45 minutes while you check every part. Let's see what else is missing. I don't think that might be the only thing, but it's that's obvious that's missing. That's a big part. So, I guess they screw up, man. But they gave me some white gloves. Yeah, they gave me a couple pairs of pretty white gloves, or maybe a few, yeah, two pairs. Wasn't that sweet? Uh, <laughs> very Asiatic. <laughs> eh, dirt on me anyway. Um, yeah, it's not in here. This is, uh, we just made by. I'm always afraid of that because, uh, you know, when he's made in China. Yeah, there we go. That's why they got white, 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 white gloves. I don't know who it is, but, uh, something you gotta watch out for. You know, that's one thing about dealing locally because, uh, you know, now I gotta deal with stupid Amazon. These are not bad, but you get more and more like Sears and Roebuck, and you know what happened to them, right? Goodbye, Jeff Bezos, you know? Anyway, he'll, he'll, he'll leave with his money. Well, the shed's basically done except for that one panel. What Amazon is going to do is they're going to send me a whole other shed. I'm going to take that panel out, and they're going to just return it as something. <laughs> but right now, it shows not as delivered. I got it back in Saturday, so we've got to wait till it shows delivered. I put the tie downs on it. These are the, these are the augers. You really ought to always do this, even if this is probably not necessary for in here because there's uh, walls on here everywhere. But got tie downs on it, and uh, we also uh, installed a shelf in there. So some stuff. I'm gonna probably put a shelf over here with uh, we can put all the small cans and stuff on it for like. You know, sprays and cleaning products and paint and stuff. Um, just pretty good. Also, I took some Flex Seal and I did the, the roof along the top, uh, along the seams, rubberized Flex Seals. Even though that doesn't really present a problem, it also uh, got it where you know, we went over these bolts with Flex Seal on the roof, especially down here because the leaves will accumulate in there and it builds up. Um, I've had some, I got a steel shed up for, one of them is up for 27 years, and it's still good, because I had to repaint it a couple times, but, you know, they, they, these things hold up forever, and it was through a bunch of hurricanes, so, this was like under a couple hundred bucks, not bad, it does take more time to put up, but the, the advantage of the small ones is that, the smaller sheds, is that a sink, one person could put them up a lot easier, the one I did that was like 10 by 12, Mm. I actually put some yeah I also want to say something else here as a, a tidbit say the shed does not have you don't have enough height you don't like the height on it and it wants to be a little bit bigger you could take you put your blocks down then you could take four by fours and then screw them to each other just around the corners so that'll bring it up another three and three quarter inches so four by four is like not exactly four inches but that makes a big difference in a height if you want to do that um, you can actually bring them up. And then the thing is, when you walk into it, you step into it. But you can also build up the inside. Well, you know, whatever. I mean, the only disadvantage to that is, like I did it on the other shed, the, uh, the one that was a 10 by 12. I had to make, in the front, since it was built up like that, and it went down, I had to make a little ramp with cement. So you could roll, in, roll something up in there and roll it down, but... Actually, that made that shed like a cheap metal shed, like a small building. So you could do a lot with these little metal, metal sheds. And again, like I said, I got one of them out there. It's been here 27 years. Um, and, oh, I should also say this. Now, I'm not in the snow area, obviously, because I'm in Florida, north central Florida. But if you have, uh, 
you know, if you want, you can always put bracing on a roof. You could put like a, a, you know, a post down here with a T on the top that goes along. It's, you know, it's like this doesn't have a roof beam because it's small, but I did that on the other one. And because um, I, I got stuff on the inside to make it even stronger for hurricanes. So these aren't, so you can get them up and then you can actually do a little more to them later on. And also on the other ones I did, those are those augers are in there pretty good. Now this one I'm not going to put any cement around it, but on the other ones because this is in a, an enclosed area, but the other ones I had I put cement on top of that stuff after this all settles in. Like if these aren't tight enough, you just screw it down a little more. It's an auger; it goes down into the ground. But you don't want to make them too tight. The other thing is, you see I have it over here. I don't have it going over the roof. You have it going over this, and I didn't. I did them as close to the corner as possible because I could have probably put it right here, but then it's, you know, this is this is the strongest spot, I think, because this is going over this, right? So you want them on the corners. You know, sometimes people bring them in a little further. Well, in this case, the door wouldn't have opened, but a lot of them, they have the doors open up in the middle, and you, got, you can bring them in more. You want to put them on more on the corners, and you don't want to go over the entire roof because this will scratch the roof. Right, if you put it over this, plus bend this down. Now it depends on your application. You might, if you do that, if you do that to make sure that the roof stays in there better. Um, you know, if you try, it doesn't blow off. Make sure you put some flex seal or something on it, a rubberized undercoating. Make sure that wire does not move around and scratch the roof. Oh, the other thing I did, you probably can't see it, but up on the top there, I put a couple of uh, pop rivets because. Those are in there way better than these screws. Pop, you know, if you actually pop riveted this thing together uh, with pop rivets, you know, uh, it would even be stronger because, you know, it's not necessary though. I mean, it's not really necessary, but pop rivets are about as strong as a spot weld. They're maybe stronger. Those things are strong as anything, especially if you put a little washer on the other side. But, you know, you can always make, you know, Mr. Overkill. So, but it's good to go. I've got to wait for this panel to come in, but as it is, I could still use it. And, uh, you know, well worth the money. Just forgot to throw a couple more tips in there. Just remember about getting your tie downs. If you want to make a little higher, you can do the 4x4s uh, four four on the bottom. Pressure treat it, pressure treat it. Then you have to make a little cement ramp to go up over that. And uh, the flex seal on uh, the joints on the top, even though not necessary. If the wind's blowing in from the side really hard, those joints can leak a little bit. You got the flex seal on there, they ain't going to leak, okay? So, um, you know, just some quick, simple tips.